I've been part of the part of the Truth and Reconciliation uh, event here in Edmonton, and today, uh, as of the United Church of Canada, which I'm a part of, uh, I made a statement to the commissioners sharing panel that in, in, uh, apologized to First Nations people in general for the uh, imposition of, of, uh, of culture and uh, ways that were not the ways of the first, first people here. And the apology really speaks to how uh, the, uh, uh, the, the arrivers, the newcomers to this land uh, uh, didn't value and recognize the gifts and the spirituality of, of, of the people here. It's difficult to know where to begin my remarks this morning. The existence of residential schools will forever be among the great wrongs of Canadian history. An example of the profound harm we are capable of when inequality, paternalism, and racism prevail over our sense of common humanity. Well, you know, so much of it is story for me. Um, I knew that uh, my grandparents ended the industrial school in, in Regina, Saskatchewan. And uh, I heard, heard stories as I was uh, growing, how they came together, perhaps even arranged marriage. Uh, Mary Bell Cody, who attended the residential school, uh, you know, it, it, I just can't imagine what it would have been like for my grandparents um, having to shift, you know, their culture or, so fast, you know, like in, in their lifetime. I, I get the sense that my grandmother was, um, you know, was 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 uh, um, challenged maybe by the, uh, I, you know, I don't know the missionaries at the time, and, and uh, but perhaps my grandmother, you know, could, could stand up for herself too sometimes. But um, she's the one who. Uh, who realized that I wasn't a Margaret, I was a Maggie. So I am always thankful to my grandmother, Mary Bell, who said I'm Maggie. And uh, so I don't have too many memories of her, uh, but certainly a lot of memories of my grandfather, Fred Dieter. We understood, you know, that my grandfather was a very successful farmer and uh, that that industrial school prepared him for that and prepared my grandmother to, uh, to be uh, a housewife, you know, and be about those domestic... Uh, those domestic realities. I want to ask the children and the grandchildren of survivors, all of those who are related to survivors, to stand up and well. Um, you know, maybe it was just little bits and pieces of story that came from my father. And the way that we were, um, the way that we were raised, and and the things that I I was witness to in my father, my father had a healing journey. Uh, it, it, it was really one kind of profound moment that I realized it was. Um, I would have been in my early twenties and, and at home with my parents for a visit or something, and we were having coffee. And my father told me that he um, he dreamt about the uh, schoolmaster that night, and he said, you know, it was, he said it was really it was really an interesting dream. He said, and he was really quite animated, and but he said uh, it was it was like I'd forgiven him. We were sitting in the Belcaris uh, Belcaris restaurant having a coffee, talking about the weather. He said, so it feels like have I forgiven him? You know, have. So he said, I woke up and I felt light. He said, I felt so light. You know, there, there's something deeper there that maybe I'm not really recognizing, you know, that this is really, there really is some profound hurt or pain. It's it, going back to my father's dream, you know, something within his heart opened up. And, you know, whether it was in a dream or some expression that he felt forgiveness and it freed him up I, I don't think I've ever heard you know in any talk of reconciliation that's significant and meaningful to say just forget about it and go on with your life that is that is not we want to speak the truth hold the truth as painful as that is hold it collectively together 
encourage one another. That's really what it's all about.